Hi everyone, welcome to a new edition of Loremaker's Guide to the Galaxy. I am the archivist here at CIG, Sherry Heiberg. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Loremaker's Guide, it's a show in which the writers and loremakers take turns guiding you through different systems in the galaxy that we are creating for you, the players. This week we are delving into the Oso system. It's a system I'm fond for for a lot of reasons, mainly because it has actual sentient indigenous life, as opposed to a lot of the other systems that are fair chance act, act protected. Uh, we have an actual hunter-gatherer society on Oso 2, who, you know, they build, they fight, they've got tools, they have complex societies, they have daytime TV dramas. Well, actually, they don't have that, but they should. And they're all located here in this system on this planet, Oso 2. Now, uh, well, as to the background of the system, it was discovered in 2861 by explorer Errol Navis. He named it after his daughter, Oso. Very cute. Uh, as I said, it is Fair Chance Act protected, which is much to the chagrin of a lot of terraforming corporations who would very, very, very much like to have a crack at Oso 2 over here. Since it is within the green band, it already has a human-friendly atmosphere, and it's lush and biodiverse, and just represents this incredible chunk of profit that they can't have. You may remember that system and the Osonians upon it if you have ever read the tale The Lost Generation. It's a Tanya, Tanya Oriel story, Tanya Oriel being a cool spacefaring adventurer archaeologist. Uh, in that story, she's trying to find the remains of the Artemis, the lost colony ship, and she ends up crash landed on Oso, uh, which you know, she runs into a bit of trouble. So you should uh, you should read it and find out what that trouble was. Here we have the sun of Oso, the star. It is an F-type main sequence star. For those of you who have followed along thus far, we know that the main sequence stars are the stars that burn hydrogen and. They are the most populous stars in the galaxy. F being one of the, it's not quite as common as G, which is our, our star type, but it's more common than the next one up. It, uh, its apparent color is white, but it is classified as yellow-white. This star right here is middle-aged, about, at about uh, three billion years old. And, uh, but it's still going strong. It still has friends and hobbies and a life, and uh, it's gonna get its groove back any second now. Here we have Oso 1. Uh, the animation isn't really reflecting what this planet does or what it, what it looks like. It is a magma planet. It is, its surface is covered entirely with lava. I mean, to say lava because it's on the surface. Of course, it's also in the depths of the planet, so magma and lava are both correct. But uh, this, I digress. This planet is uh, tidally locked to the star, so it wouldn't be rotating as you see here. One side of it would always be fixed to the star, and the other would be always fixed in the opposite direction. Uh, on one side, it's totally magma, and on the other side, it's solid, and you can land starships on it. Uh, from space, it's a pretty spectacular sight, or it, you know, just imagine that it is, and one day we'll have the visuals to reflect that, as you see one side that's totally fiery, and then as the twilight sets in along the solar terminus, it kind of gradually fades into darkness on the other side. It's kind of a volcanologist's dream. You can go there, safely land your vessel, and then you can go all the way over to the side that has magma all the time. You can do investigations on the solar terminator. It's just pretty much, you know, researchers, researchers love it. Researchers just love it, but it's kind of hard to get permits because of this planet. Whoa, not that planet, that's so-so too. I mean to say, that's Oso 3. This planet, Oso 2. <laughs> okay, this is the home of the Osonians. As you can see, it is an uh, inhabited planet with lots of green on it, lots of oceans. It's huge, it's big, it's biodiverse. Uh, the gravity is a little bit heavier than that of Earth, but it is just pretty much just as populated. You know, lots of plants and animals and creatures. Uh, as I said earlier, this is the planet that Tanya Oriel crash landed on and got into trouble with the, with the law because she did communicate with the Osonians. She found it a bit of a challenge because the Osonians, which are about four, four and a half foot tall insectoid creatures, they don't really communicate with uh, sound, they communicate with color. They've got these like panels, these biological panels on the sides of their heads that flash different colors. 
uh, and that's how they communicate. And Tina sort of figured something out while she was there, but as far as we know, it's a unique form of communication in the galaxy, and it makes animators everywhere cry. <laughs> While we're on the subject of that, I just want to jump over here to Yogi Station. It's, it's uh, meant to be here in order to sort of prevent people from going in and out of the system in order to uh, steal from OSO2 or cause any trouble on the planet. Uh, it's because the system is fair chance have protected. That said, it is considered sort of a dead end job to get stationed there because there really isn't a lot to do. A lot of people aren't terribly interested in breaking the law in order to go after the Osonians. Uh, Xion are, though. They find the Osonians to be incredibly delicious once they're rotted to a certain point. And corrupt people on Yogi Station have been known to sell bodies of Osonians to passing Xion trade envoys. They say that they don't hunt and kill the Osonians, so that's at least a plus, but who knows where they get those bodies. Wahahaha, this has been your fake Halloween special. Let's move on here to Oso-3, which we accidentally jumped to earlier. Oso-3 is a gas giant with silicate clouds. Uh, we're again running into a little bit of the limitations on the visualization system we have. It's meant to be a gas giant with bands of green and white which I think would be uh, pretty cool looking. Not much to be seen here, so let's zoom out and go on to OSO4, which is located right here. OSO4 is a coreless planet. Uh, coreless doesn't mean it's hollow. You know, it's not inhabited by conspiracy theory, earth-ruling lizard people. It is a planet that is undifferentiated, so it doesn't have a solid metal core. Rather, it has metal distributed all throughout the planet. It's kind of like a fruitcake if you make it the right way. It's a popular place for miners who are willing to skirt the law to go, because you, you can get resources there if you want to, but you don't really want to attract the attention of Yogi Station. Because you don't want to go to space jail. Let's move on from OSO4 and go to OSO5. All right, this is OSO5. It's an ice giant, sort of like Neptune. It has an ammonia and vapor atmosphere. It sees a little bit more traffic than some of the other inner worlds from illegal mining operations. Although, if you want just kind of ammonia and water vapor, you've, there are plenty of other places to choose from. There's no reason to illegally mine that, that, that planet. And let's zoom out one more time and go to OSO6, which is a dwarf planet, rather like Pluto. Uh, it is a planet that was probably like a, a, a dwarf planet, celestial body, whatever you want to say, that was probably a bit of passing rock that was captured by the system billions and billions of years ago. It sees more traffic, more legal traffic than anywhere else in the system because it's on the outskirts and Yogi Station people are much, much more concerned with either protecting the species on OSO2 or profiting from the species on OSO2 given, you know, on any given day, depending on who you're talking to and how corrupt the station is at any given time. So you can, you can kind of get away with murder there. I mean, not, not murder. You shouldn't kill people. That's, not, that's against space law. But you can get away with some like nickel and iron and stuff with not much more than a slap on the wrist. Let me just zoom out so you can see the whole system. You can see the jump points uh, to Pyro. There's one to Castro, one to Callus. And Yogi Station is pretty much in charge of policing all of those, so you see they have their work cut out for them. And all the Osonians live there on that little tiny planet. Hopefully they can afford a little bit more protection than they've had in the past in the future. <laughs> well, there it is. That is the Oso system. Uh, like I said, I'm fond of it because of the indigenous life. Uh, and because of the potential drama one can get into on Yogi Station. And I hope you enjoyed this tour of the OSO system. Thanks always to our subscribers and to everyone who supports the development of this game. Uh, see you next time.
Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.